Hi, and welcome to the Stock Scores Market Minutes for March 23rd, 2015. This week, I want to talk about the importance of analyzing the data. People email me all the time saying, I did this trade and it didn't work. Is there something wrong with what I am doing? Well, to answer that question based on one trade is really quite silly. As strategy traders, we are trading a numbers game. It is a situation where we're doing the same set of rules over and over again, and we expect, if our strategy is effective, to work over a large number of trades. You can learn a lot about your strategy's effectiveness by compiling data on the performance of each trade over a large number of trades. It's important to not judge the effectiveness based on simply one trade, but rather at least 30 and more is better. You want to look at how changing different entry, exit, and risk management rules affects your overall results. Look for patterns, look for general things that happen over and over again, not the outliers. We need to avoid that testing bias when we are testing the effectiveness of our rules. Now I did this this past couple of weeks on one of my strategies and just by compiling the results of 30 or 40 trades, I was able to glean some real good uh, uh, information about how I could make that strategy better, particularly on the exit rule. So if you are a strategy trader, make sure that on a regular basis you analyze the data, the record of trades that you have made to see how you can improve them. All right, let's take a look at the market this week. We had a pretty good bounce back again this week as the market rallied on the Fed news, basically saying that they weren't in a desperate uh, you know, state of wanting to raise interest rates. And that allowed that big spike up on the 18th there, and really brought the markets closer to horizontal resistance. So I would consider this a neutral chart right now. We've basically been in a sideways pattern for a couple of months with some oscillating up and down, and we're coming now into resistance where I expect the large cap stocks will get stuck. Here's the long-term trend, and you can see that long-term, this remains a strong bull market, and we shouldn't doubt that. So as long as that upward trend line is in place, I remain a bull on U.S. stocks. Where the real outperformance is coming is in the U.S. small caps. And I've talked about this a lot in recent weeks. The U.S. small caps is where money seems to be going. With the expectation that rates may rise in the future, money is looking for places where it can get a better return. It's moving out of the large caps, which have benefited from quantitative easing and low interest rates, and it's looking for some gains in those smaller cap stocks. So I continue to stress that this is the place to play, uh, particularly the U.S. small caps outside of the commodity sector. Speaking of commodity sectors, here's the chart of the TSX, and look at all that chop over the week in the TSX. Been a lot of volatility. That means a lot of uncertainty. The rise in the U.S. dollar is really affecting commodity stocks, which have a heavy weighting in Canada, and that is weighing on this market. The downward trend line was broken, that's encouraging, but all that volatility tells me that the market doesn't know whether it's coming or going in Canada, and that is a reason to be pretty selective in what you trade. Focus in on the alpha stocks, those trading abnormally. Big picture, this is a neutral chart, sideways trading, underneath resistance, but there are rising bottoms on that chart, so we still have some optimism in place. We just need to break out through that resistance, and I don't think that'll happen until we get some weakness in the U.S. dollar. TSX Venture also heavily weighted in the commodity stocks, and with the pullback in the U.S. dollar on Wednesday, you got a little bit of a rally in the TSX Venture market as some money went into the gold and junior energy names. But still, generally speaking, this is a pretty ugly chart. We've been in a sideways range, so we are seeing some stability. But until we can break from some optimism, break from some rising bottoms, show that the buyers are back to this market, I would remain very selective. Now, there are pockets of strength on the TSX venture in perhaps the healthcare technology areas. Those little pockets of strength are worth trading on the TSX venture. The Treasury bond market broke its downward trend line, the very short term one. Um, you can see that the trend went parabolic. As often happens when trends go parabolic, we had a pullback to the long-term upward trend line. I've drawn that in green. We bounced off of that uh, in the last couple of weeks, and now it looks like we're gonna move back up toward the highs. I don't think that the market will get to new highs. Certainly it's possible, but typically when markets go parabolic and then pull back to the trend line, as this chart has, they usually go into a sideways trading pattern. So my expectation for bonds is we're gonna see them go sideways with volatility diminishing over time. Lots of volatility now, 
A couple months from now, that volatility should have subsided. Here's the US dollar. It is working its way back to its upward trend line. You can see there again, the trend went parabolic in the middle of March, that run up and away from the green trend line, and now it's coming back to the trend line just as it did in the third week of February. That doesn't mean that the trend is over. The buyers are still in control of the US dollar. They're just second guessing some of the emotional strength that they have put in the US dollar. So my expectation is we still see a bit more of a pullback that'll be short term supportive for commodities. But until the trend is broken, I think you want to be real cautious with anything that is uh, US dollar sensitive. There you can see the bounce in gold, largely motivated by that pullback in uh, the US dollar. However, still it's a negative chart. We've got falling tops. The, you know, the chart is falling from left to right. That means the sellers are in control. And yes, some short-term support has held. And yes, we could see two or three weeks of upward movement in gold and in energy. However, that's a pretty short-term trend. And so it's really only appropriate to be traded by fairly active traders who are going to move in and out of some of these stocks in a, you know, just a, a period measured in days, not weeks or months. Same can be said for oil. You can see there the strength on Wednesday, motivated by that weakness in the US dollar, but it is still a negative chart. We have falling tops down towards support. That means the sellers are in control. Until we can break that cycle of falling tops, be very cautious with oil and only trade it on sh a very short term basis. Here's the VIX showing that fear is at a real low point. And my expectation is maybe we see a little bounce up in this. It's gotten a little bit low. The implied volatility in the options market for the S&P 500 is really saying there is no fear. And that is always, to me, a bit of a fear because it, it implies some complacency. So I want to keep an eye on this. But there's, until there's a sign of life in the VIX, which we really haven't seen for a while, I wouldn't worry too much about the fear being a factor. All right, the outlook then. Bullish on U.S. stocks long term, as I have been for forever, it seems. Uh, neutral short term, we do have that sideways trending action coming into resistance. Neutral on Canadian stocks long term and short term, I don't like all that uncertainty with the volatility in the Canadian stock market. So I think you have to be very stock specific in Canada, trade the stocks that are trading with the real abnormal action because that's where they're trading on their own story. Gold bearish in both time frames, oil bearish in both time frames. I do think we could get a little bit more of a bounce this week and next. But that's a very short term thing. So you got to be uh, pretty nimble to take advantage of that at this point. US stocks rebounded this week, but money is looking for alpha and playing the smaller cap names. That's great. As a trader, I love to see that. Canadian markets showed some uncertainty because of that US dollar strength and the volatility in the US dollar. If there is a pullback in the US dollar, it will continue to help gold and oil. But let's not forget that that trend is still intact, upward trend on the US dollars. Uh, and these commodities are basically still fighting that long-term pessimism. So only make short-term trades in the commodity space. All right, well, that has been the Stock Scores Market Minutes for March 23rd, 2015. Have a great week in the market and trade well.